Let's begin. Okay. So, hi everyone. So, I have the pleasure to introduce uh, Lucas Pal, who will be given the junior talk today. So, Lucas defended his PhD at University of Rochester in 2019 and is now a postdoc in at University of Bonn. So, his research focus on game theory and mathematical economics. And today we'll speak about the final characterization of perfect equilibrium. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you uh, everyone for, uh, for coming. And uh, thank you again, the organizers for, uh, for inviting me for the talk. This is joint work with uh, Yvonne, uh, who I think it's online actually, and, uh, and Hari Govindan. All right, so uh, uh, it, yeah. So let me start with some basic facts uh, that I hope everyone knows in game theory. So the, uh, the set of Nash equilibrium of a finite game is given by uh, finitely many polynomial equalities and inequalities. And if we're given an actual uh, finite game with n the finite set of players, s n the pure strategy set for each player, and sigma n the mixed strategy set with g n the payoff functions, it's not hard for us to write down what the set of polynomial inequalities and inequalities are, right? So the first set here in red of, of inequalities is the set of inequalities that pins down best replies and the second set of equalities and inequalities defines the strategy set. So with these two sets of inequalities, we can identify the set of Nash equilibria in a game. So the main question in this, uh, in this paper is, is it possible to obtain a similar finite characterization for perfect equilibrium? Okay. So let's recall the definition of, uh, of perfect equilibrium. A mixed profile sigma of a game G is a perfect equilibrium if there exists a sequence of completely mixed strategy profiles converging to sigma and such that sigma is the best reply against each one of the elements of the sequence, okay? So from this definition, it's not clear whether a finite characterization can really be obtained for perfect equilibrium, right? And this is easy to see because you would have to check for a candidate profile sigma infinitely many times whether sigma is a best reply against each, each element of this sequence, right? So for each, uh, for each k, you have to check whether sigma is a best reply against sigma k. So as I said, we're after a finite characterization and the type of result we're going to obtain is as follows. Uh, sigma is a perfect equilibrium of the game if and only if uh, a polynomial system P sigma has a solution. And we're going to provide this, this, uh, this system explicitly. So in principle, you'll be able to pick the system. It's given explicitly. You'll be able to, let's say, program the system and check whether the system has a solution. And if it has a solution, sigma is guaranteed to be perfect. All right. And the methods we're going to use to obtain this result, they come from uh, two rather recent results in real, real algebraic geometry. One is the curve selection lemma, uh, proved by Bazou and Hua in 2018. The curve selection lemma is a classical result, but what Bazou and Hua did was to, to provide a quantitative version of this curve selection lemma. So actually uh, giving estimates for certain constants that are just known to exist. And the same thing uh, with the Loyazovich inequality of uh, Kurjika and Spotieza. Uh, so in this paper also, they show that certain, uh, certain estimates for certain quantities on the Loyazovich inequality that are known to exist only, and we're going to use these estimates to prove our theorem, right? I'll be a bit more specific with respect to this later. All right, so let me talk about the main tool that we're going to use to construct this polynomial system. And these two are, is uh, uh, lexicographic probability systems. So what is a lexicographic probability system? A lexicographic probability system of order K of player N over the pure strategy set of player N is a tuple of probability distributions over the pure strategy set of player N. Okay, so it's just a vector of probability distributions over the pure strategy set of this player. It is said to have full support if this condition here holds. What this condition means is that just each strategy of, uh, of player N appears with positive probability, probability in at least one of the elements of these uh, LPS. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 
So an LPS profile is an assignment uh, of an LPS for each player. Okay, so nothing new there. And the and that is uh, the, the nice thing is that there is a, na a natural interpretation for what an LPS is, and uh, an LPS whole n of of the player then can be interpreted as the collection of theories that the opponents of n hold about what n is going to play. Right. So whole zero n is uh, can be seen as the primary theory or the primary conjecture about what n is going to play. Whole n a secondary conjecture about what n is going to play, and so on and so forth. And it's also considered that whole zero n is infinitely, infinitely more likely to be played by, by player n than whole one n, which is infinitely more likely to be played than whole two n, and so on and so forth. So there is a, a certain hierarchy uh, in this in this interpretation. Um, I have a question. Uh, uh, yeah. So do you then uh, assume that the different levels of the lexicographic probability system have disjoint uh, supports? Uh, no, no assumption of this kind. No. Okay. Because right. then this perhaps this interpretation is not so compelling what you say, right? Uh, in terms of primary theory, secondary theory, and so on. Because if the supports may overlap, then um, it's not that these theories are perfectly complementary. Yeah, yeah. So, so in this sense, uh, in this sense, that's that's fine. Uh, yeah. I'm still introducing the the the, uh, the the classical definition of it. So, but uh, you, you're right. There's not going to be this uh, assumption of these joint supports between them. All right. So let me uh, uh, introduce one more notion. With this definition of lexicographic uh, probability systems, we can generalize the common notion of uh, best reply for finite games. Uh, and to a notion of lexicographic best reply. So a strategy sigma n is a lexicographic best reply of a certain order to the LPS profile ho, if this lexicographic ordering of these vectors here uh, hold. So what are these vectors? You just compute the induced payoffs by the lexicographic uh, profile uh, with respect to sigma n and compare them lexicographically against any other strategy, against the vectors induced by any other strategy. All right, so in words, sigma n is lexicographically better against ho minus n than any other of players n strategies. Okay, and I'm introducing here the definition, of course, in the paper we do this for n players, uh, for, for, a, for any finite number of players, but the, uh, uh, this will require a bit more definition about how the other players combine uh, their, uh, their, uh, the LPSs of, of the other players to generate a belief about what, what players are going to do. And this will complicate notation a little bit. So let's just keep in mind the definition for two players. All right, so with this definition, we can also generalize the notion of Nash equilibrium, right? To the notion of lexicographic Nash equilibrium. Given an LPS profile Ho of order K, sigma is a lexicographic Nash equilibrium with respect to Ho. If essentially the first theory or the first conjecture here is correct, right? And sigma N is a lexicographic best reply of order, of order K to Ho. Okay. So to make things, uh, these things a bit more concrete, let me give you uh, an example of how do we use this lexicographic, this notion of lexicographic Nash equilibrium to identify perfect equilibrium finite games, okay? We impose conditions on the LPS in the definition of lexicographic Nash equilibrium, let's just to do this. So let's consider here this uh, two player game. There are three actions for each player. Uh, the role player is going to be player one and the column player is going to be player two. MC is a perfect equilibrium, TL is only a Nash equilibrium, okay? MC is a lexicographic Nash equilibrium with respect to a full support LPS of order one, right? So these are, let's say, the assumptions that we do in the LPS uh, to obtain our identification of uh, perfect equilibrium, right? And you can see that it is indeed full support. All strategies here appear with positive probability, and it's not hard to check that M is a lexicographic best reply against this LPS, and C is a lexicographic best reply against players one LPS, right? But the interesting thing, and simple also to note, is that TL is not a lexicographic Nash equilibrium with respect to any full support LPS of order one. 
And this you can see because uh, T is weakly dominated by M uh, here, right, for, for the role player. So any full support LPS that puts positive probability of C and R of the column player uh, will be such that M is going to do strictly better than T. So T can never be uh, a lexicographic best reply to a full support LPS of order one, right? All right, so with these definitions, we're ready to state uh, uh, the theorem that we prove uh, in, this, in this paper. Just need one more notation, and this notation here is L ho. Okay, so you can read L ho as the minimal length for the LPS to have full support. I'll call this length uh, only, right? All right, so, so the theorem says, uh, if G is a finite gain, okay, then there exists no negative integers L and K, such that a strategy profile sigma is a perfect equilibrium of G, if and only if there exists an LPS profile Ho of order K, such that three conditions hold. The first one says that Ho has full support with the length of this, of this LPS less than L. The second one says uh, that the, the primary theory is correct, right? As we've seen before in the definition of lexicographic Nash equilibrium. And the third says that sigma n is a best reply of order k against ho. So two and three are just the uh, properties that characterize uh, lexicographic Nash equilibrium. So, but the, but the real uh, contribution here is that we can actually estimate what uh, those quantities are, right? So you don't have to pay attention to the exact formulas here. This is just for you to see that it's possible to estimate them, but they depend uh, L and K only on the uh, cardinalities of the strategy set of the players and the number of players in this game. Okay. Uh, Lucas, can I yep. ask a question? Sure. Uh, what does uh, those uh, probability system give you on top of uh, just restricting the players to play actions with uh, some given exponent of epsilon? So each action you play with an uh, with a given exponent of epsilon, uh, epsilon, epsilon squared, epsilon to the power three, you take okay. an uh, equilibrium in this uh, restricted subset of strategies. You take the limit as epsilon goes to zero, and this yep. epsilon and this limit gives you a probability Proper. system as you define. So, what is the difference among the two uh, approaches? So it's it's slightly different. So in the construction that uh, I think I think you're let's say using using Merten's suggestion for constructing uh, proper equilibrium, right? So you restrict the strategy sets in this specific way, and then take limits on the Nash equilibria that you compute in this restricted mixed strategy set. So the the intuition here is uh, is uh, similar, right? Uh, uh, to that, the intuition is similar, but uh, still, in this construction, you take limits, right? You're taking a limit, let's say, to to compute uh, equilibrium. So this is I'm not sure I'm not sure if if I'm uh, if I understood exactly your question, but this type of construction won't give you a finite characterization, won't give you a, a finite system, right? Is the, why does that answer? Give you a finite system? Because you f you fix epsilon and compute a Nash equilibrium for the restricted strategy set. Yeah. Then you take epsilon smaller, compute another one. Epsilon smaller, compute another one. Epsilon, you, you, you yeah. and so, and then you have a limit, right? The limit gives yeah. you uh, a Nash equilibrium of the original game with and the yes, restrictions. But, but, yeah. Yes, but if you look at the at the strategies with uh, smaller exponents, then they actually give you a probability system as you define. Mm. Um, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I if I. Uh, if I'm following them, but, per, but perhaps we can talk uh, uh, at the at the end about this. Okay, sure. All right, thanks. Yeah. I also have a, a question. Mm -hmm. um, so about uh, two-player games, because for two-player games, it is known that a perfect equilibrium um, is exactly a Nash equilibrium where both strategies are not weakly dominated. Exactly. And the strategy yep. is not weakly dominated precisely when it is optimal against a full support strategy of the other uh, player. Yeah. So this would suggest that for two player games, the yeah. maximal length that you would need would be one. 
Exactly. So the L and K is one. So for two-player games, it's uh, the problem is very easy to to solve. Okay. So the real thing here is for more players. But you're exactly right. Yeah. And you see, even I can comment even in the uh, in the next slides, I'll sh uh, I'll show you some uh, intuition on how do we get about L and K, and uh, you see uh, that this is linked to a particular to the geometry of a, a particular set here. Why is it one, and so on and so forth. All right. So let me give you some intuition on how to find L. Uh, so let's start with some sigma that is uh, not completely mixed. Of course, uh, perfect equilibrium of the finite gain G, right? If it is completely mixed, uh, we just have to check uh, a Nash equilibrium, the Nash condition, right? So let's consider the set of completely mixed strategies such that sigma is the best reply against them, okay? And that's exactly the set here defined by this formula. And this set is non-empty, of course, because we're assuming that sigma is perfect. So there is a completely mixed sequence that is converging to sigma, okay? And uh, uh, to, to go back to the question of Andrea, uh, the L and K here uh, are linked to the fact that this system, the, that this set here is actually a fine. Okay, so when you have two players, these polynomials here, they become uh, uh, linear functions essentially, and these sets become a fine. So how do we get about finding A? Our aim is to find a polynomial path Right. This is in quotes because we're not uh, going to be able to find exactly a polynomial path, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, that starts at sigma and ends at an interior point of p sigma. Okay. The coefficients that define this polynomial path will define uh, the LPS of each player. Uh, and how this is going to do, the, the, how this is going to happen, the coefficient of the term of i degree of this polynomial is going to be the ith order element of the LPS profile we are looking for, okay? And what's the property that we're going to use to find this polynomial path? The property is, uh, the property is uh, that uh, the set is semi-algebraic, okay? So defined by a finite union of a finite system of polynomial equations and inequalities, okay? So we're going to prove a quantitative version of a known theorem called the Nash curve selection lemma in order to obtain these kinds of paths. So the lemma we're going to prove says that if P is a semi-algebraic subset of an Euclidean space defined by polynomials with degrees bounded by D, and if you pick a point in the closure of this semi-algebraic set, then there exists an epsilon and a power series such, such that uh, the image of from zero to epsilon is inside P, the path starts, at the fixed point x that we start at the beginning, and the order of this uh, power series is less than a certain quantity that depends on kappa and d, okay, only. So how we're going to use this lemma? We apply this lemma to the point sigma, our perfect equilibrium that we fix at the beginning, and the closure of p sigma, and we take a power series selection phi. And we obtain a characterization for perfect equilibrium in terms of, of uh, these selections. Sigma is a perfect equilibrium if and only if there exists a power series path with these properties. And our candidate for L is, is going to be then uh, the order of the power series, okay? All right, so uh, how do we go about finding K? Uh, so we, Recall we want to find k weakly larger than L such that if sigma is the best reply against phi of order k, then sigma is perfect, okay? So we're going to take the selection phi that we obtained from our lemma, and we're going to plug it into the pay of these different polynomials here, right? These are polynomials, we plug a power series in them, so this is a power series. In the two-player case, it's very easy to see uh, to compute what this power series actually uh, looks like in the end player case is also uh, simple, but we, we need a bit more notation. And these are the coefficients of uh, the power series, right? So the payoff differences evaluated exactly at the coefficients of the selection, which are our candidate for the LPS. So we obtain a certain characterization for the condition of lexicographic best reply in terms of the polynomials that are obtained from truncating 
this uh, power series, right? So this characterization reads, sigma is a lexicographic best reply of order k against whole minus n, if and only if the truncated power series at the order k has a positive sign, essentially, okay? And it's not hard to see why this would be true, because if the, uh, if the polynomial has positive sign, right, then this can only happen if, and that, this, that this happens if and only if the first coefficient of this polynomial is positive, or the first coefficient of this polynomial is zero and the second coefficient is positive, and so on and so forth. So you can see from that uh, how the lexicographic uh, ordering uh, operates, right? So you can translate a, a, a statement about lexicographic best replies in terms of a statement of uh, the sign of certain polynomials around uh, zero, okay? And so the, oh, sorry. And so the question becomes essentially on uh, whether it's possible to know the sign of this power series uh, around zero for large enough K, if there exists a K such that we can only see finitely many terms, finitely many coefficients of this power series to determine the sign. And that's where the, the, the result of Kurjik and Spocieza enters in this. There are a few more details, of course, to, to prove this, but we use the Loyazovich inequality to obtain this, uh, this K, essentially. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, for the presentation. So, are there more questions? Elon, do you want to ask your question again? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I have a question still. Yep. Um, so you are using this power series. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, is there a formal relationship between the power series that you're using and non-standard probabilities? So the, the non-standard analysis of, of Robinson by assuming an, an infinitesimal. Yeah, yeah. So these are, uh, so the idea, uh, uh, well, in the, in the, in the field of, uh, of uh, rational functions, right, you can provide an order to this field of rational functions and then talk up formally about infinitesimals in this field, right? It's not, uh, it's not the, the, uh, the construction of hyperreals by any sense, but there is a formal way to talking about infinitesimals there. And uh, you're, let's say, leveraging this way of talking about infinitesimals to avoid uh, taking limits, talking in a finite way about uh, infinitesimals. Yeah. 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 So if I you- also have if, a question. Yep. So when I, in two player games, the sequences that approach that um, perfect equilibrium are confined to a cone of linear things where you you have a clear direction and that's why it's even very easy to yeah. find this uh, yeah. and finitely many steps. But if you have multiple players, then you can have cusps where it's very hard to sort of- Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you have singularities. Your, yeah. your, your curves, I mean, represent that? Did you find a, a curve that goes into the cusp? Is, is that what the intuition between this curve selection? Yeah, so first, uh, so this goes back to how we, we construct the, uh, the, the selection there. So uh, if you look at the set, uh, let me go back to the set here, P sigma, right? Uh, if we look at the set P sigma, that's where the cusps are uh, uh, essentially are going to appear uh, at sigma, right? That's what the, the... So what you do is to use some tools of resolution of singularities, right? This, this, this cusps are uh, essentially uh, singularities and you can find uh, 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 the Puiseaux series, right? Uh, to solve uh, as, a, as a solution of certain systems. And then you reparameterize those Puiseaux series to find the analytic, uh, uh, paths that uh, you would like. So that's the, that's sort of the, the idea, right? If you have, uh, uh, as you said, if, he, if, this, if this is a cone, uh, these polynomials are affine functions, right? And they are very well defined. You can take this, these selections as affine functions, but when they are not, it's a bit more complicated and you have to use, uh, yeah, these tools from resolution of singularities. Also, in the example that you gave, I mean, if you eliminate the first, um, you had this uh, perfect equilibrium in the middle. 
Mm -hmm. But if you eliminate the top yeah, and the left column, it's no longer perfect because um, it's dominated by uh, right and bottom, as far as I can tell. And so you need this top left um, pair to, to actually mm -hmm. help the perfectness. So it's probably not mm -hmm. the proper equilibrium, this would be my, my guess. But I mean, anyhow. Yeah. Oh, the DMC, exactly. Yeah. So the proper is the three, is the BR. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. OK. Uh, thanks, uh, Luke for your presentation and for the questions. So we need to take uh, to stop there if we want to be on time. We, so we take four five minutes and then we will continue with uh, the presentation.